Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to our Muslim Pioneer series. I'm your host Abi Lasmar and in this video we're going to discover the story of the amazing Muslim pioneer Fatima Al-Fihri. Where can we find the world's oldest continually operating university? If you do a quick Google search on this question right now, you might find articles claiming that it's the University of Bologna in Italy. However, the University of al qarawiyyin in Morocco, founded in the year 859 CE, precedes the University of Bologna by more than two centuries. The University of al qarawiyyin is considered the most ancient university in the world still operating according to both UNESCO and Guinness World Records. Some important alumni of this university include Ibn Khaldun, who has been described as the founder of historiography, sociology, economics, and demography, and we're gonna be discovering his story as well throughout this series. But who built this amazing institution? The founder was a Muslim woman named Fatima Al-Fihri. And Fatima Al-Fihri was born in the year 800. She was the daughter of Muhammad ibn Abdullah Al-Fihri a rich merchant who settled in Fez, Morocco, with his family during the reign of Idris II. Until this day, Fatima's life holds many secrets, even to historians. One such mystery surrounds the date of her death, which may have been around 878 CE. Now, Fatima was born around the year 800 in the town of Kairouan, which is present-day Tunisia. She is of Arab Qurayshi descent, hence the name given to her, the Qurayshi one, or al Qurayshiya. Her family was part of a large migration to Fez, Morocco, from Kairouan, Tunisia. Fatima and her family fled from their hometown during the same time that families were also fleeing from Cordoba, or southern Spain. And this was due to the Arabs being expelled from these regions. And although her family did not start out wealthy, her father, Muhammad al-Fahri, became a successful merchant. And when he died, this wealth was inherited by Fatima and her sister, Maryam. And it is with this money that they went on to build their legacy. Now, little is known about her personal life, except for what was recorded by 14th century historian Ibn Abi Zar. Al-Fihri, from what we know, was married, but both her husband and father died shortly after the wedding. Her father left his wealth to both Fatima and her sister Maryam, and they were his only children. And her and her sister Maryam were well educated. They studied fiqh and hadith, and both went on to found mosques in Fez, Morocco. Fatima al-Fihri founded al qarawiyyin and Maryam founded al-Andalus. And this idea was spurred on by the fact that due to all the Muslims fleeing from Cordoba and Tunisia and other places, like Fatima and her family, they were all gathering immigrants that were devout worshippers keen on learning and studying their faith of Islam. And with as many immigrants as there were, there was overcrowding and not enough space, resources, or teachers to accommodate them. So after buying land from a man of the Hawara tribe, Fatima started her building project at the beginning of the Ramadan month of 254 Hijri, or 859 CE. She was around 59 years old. From the 10th century, the famous mosque of al qarawiyyin became the first religious institute and the largest Arab university of North Africa. It attracted lots of students and renowned scientists. There were symposiums, debates that were regularly organized there. And these same records mention the existence of a great number of libraries. Imagine the thousands of people who got their education through her institution and how many of them went on to impact the world in their own way, including Ibn Khaldun. SubhanAllah. She had the courage to invest a large amount of money to build this mosque, and she had the vision to make it an educational institution. And she also had the persistence to put in the consistent effort and overcome the challenges that she faced, and the passion for her faith, Islam, and for education to help her keep going and build this institution when times were tough, when she was losing her father and her husband. So what we can learn from Fatima is her persistence and courage and her ability to keep going and work towards the greater good, even in times of great sadness, when she lost her father and her husband, those who were dearest to her. And she decided that what she was going to do with her wealth was not build you know, a nice, beautiful house for herself and you know, maybe get a few hundred camels. 
you know, or get a few servants uh, to treat her like a queen, but rather she decided that what she was going to do with her wealth was build an institution because that was what the community needed at that time. And subhanAllah, through that institution, so many Muslim pioneers that we're going to visit and learn from in this series have attended the al qarawiyyin University. So she went on to impact the world in so many ways. And her legacy is still alive today. And al qarawiyyin University is still alive today in Fez, Morocco. And you can find artifacts and books written by some of the greatest Muslim thinkers and thought leaders that are still available in that university and preserved in their original state. Fatima al-Fahri has so much to teach us and I feel incredibly inspired by her story and her ability to build such a great institution in a time of great sadness in her life and just how you know, large her impact was throughout the history of Islam and even throughout the development of many Muslim pioneers that we will learn from in this series. I hope that you've been inspired as well by her story. And if you're enjoying this series, then make sure to give us a like and subscribe so we can continue to create content like this and bring you these amazing stories of Muslim pioneers. I'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.